Hello everyone and welcome to the Lending Car Leadership Podcast. In this series, you get to hear our esteemed leaders answer some very serious and some not so serious questions. Tune in for some candid conversations. Hello everyone. Today we have with us a national level handball player, a state level basketball champ and well, our chief business officer Abhishek Singh. Hi Abhishek, welcome to our podcast. Hi Kini, thank you. Uh, slightly loud opening. I need to figure <laughs> out whether I'm worth the attention, but let's go through the process. Definitely, definitely. And I think you already know my first question, right? We mentioned that you play so many sports. So, which is your favorite, and why? Okay. So, um, I think uh, look, the I've I've played a variety of sports. You've talked yeah. about basketball. You've talked about handball. I played uh, cricket, hockey, football, everything under the sun. But I think uh, what I differentiate myself on are two uh, two sports which you haven't talked about. Oh. One is table tennis, which I started playing at a very early age, mm-hmm. and I fancied myself to become a champion, which I wish never happened. Uh, and then a sport which I picked up very late in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started playing badminton uh, when I crossed forty. So uh, as we speak, I think those are the two uh, sports which are actually the closest to my heart. And uh, as of now, I am identifying with badminton. Have you played it at like uh, what level have you played both the sports? I mean, you know, all the campus tournaments I'm usually doing now, but on in doubles. Cool. So uh, you mentioned so many sports that you played, and most of them are uh, team sports, right? So I just want to ask you that you know, does having a sports background really help the professionals or the working side of you? If yes, then how? So I think uh, the natural answer to that obviously is it aligns you to t- teamwork quite a bit. Right. And uh, inevitably, all of us in our corporate careers at some point start leading the teams. And uh, you know, first we start with being part of teams and leading teams. So mm-hmm. I think both teamwork and leadership uh, are something that I really identify with from a sporting background. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have a few other things which I feel are underrated when you talk about team sports. I think one is the sense of boundarylessness. There are times when you need to bat for your teammate. Uh, yeah. You know, they may be having a bad day, or they may be not be right up there in terms of skill sets, and sometimes you just have to back them up, right? Mm-hmm. So I think taking that extra amount of ownership is a given in any team sport, and I think that is something that I really enjoy. Uh, the other is, uh, you know, you know, you have to fight till the last point. Right, uh, the I mean, it's it's never over till the last point it's fought, right? And I think I firmly believe in that, yeah. and that I bring uh, big time to my game in the professional arena. Mm-hmm. And uh, then lastly, I think uh, the ability to to take both victories and losses in your stride, yeah. and uh, and make sure that you're learning with each victory and with each defeat. Even when you are the victor, uh, you know you do imbibe a lot of good things from your opponents. Yeah. Uh, you know either the way they come together, or either the way they attack or defend or whatever. So I think uh, those are the five things I really think uh, sports as a background helped me with: uh, teamwork, leadership, boundarylessness, fight till the last point is played, and accepting both victories and uh, losses. Yeah, and I think those could be well the new values that lending card as well. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, and this is very interesting, right? You play so many sports, and you've you've spoken a lot about team spirit. So I just want to understand, you know, if you would just tell us a bit about your journey and their your role as a chief business officer in Lending Card. Sure. Um, so I'll start with the remit of the role first. Uh, you know, as a as a chief business officer, there are about five different streams or six different streams uh, where I work with. Uh, the first one is customer acquisition, and this is part of all the channels that we source from. Uh, so whether it be uh, digital marketing or direct marketing, channel partnership, uh, the DSAs, as well as the entire portfolio management, which is uh, upselling to existing customers. So that is one part of the remit. Yeah. The other part is the cross sell. The next part is revenue operations. Mm-hmm. So right from the time uh, you know a lead hits our system. To the time a loan is disbursed, it entirely goes through a whole lot of uh, you know uh, intermittent steps, right from calling to sanctions to acceptances to 
fulfillment of the entire customer journey. Uh, that part reports into me. And the last part, but not the least, is uh, customer service. So we are also trying to transform ourselves as a customer centric organization and customer service is not just about uh, you know one team or one individual doing it but the entire organization having a customer first culture so those are the pieces that uh, from a remit perspective uh, fall into me i think from as as i look at my role yeah. the role is really about profitable growth at lending card uh, and uh, to my mind both of them are equally important you need to be a continuously growing organization mm -hmm. so that people can see their own growths within you. Uh, the other is it needs to be profitable. So you don't just have a growth story. You have a, you have a sustainable business that you are creating, which can last beyond your lifetime. Yeah. I think those are two and uh, therefore, uh, you know, the overall uh, uh, ROA metric is what I handle as well as the disbursements. Uh, the journey for me in Lending Card has been interesting. I think uh, I know where you came from. I obviously joined as the chief analytics officer and then moved into the CBO role. Right. Um, and I think it's been a very interesting journey. When I joined Lending Card, uh, I had already you know, been a part of uh, multiple larger uh, corporations uh, as part of or as leaders in the, in the financial services space especially yeah. dealing with analytics and data. Um, I had also been a part of two startups. So mm -hmm. there was one startup which was started by one of my very senior colleagues in Standard Chartered. And we ran it for about eight years. I was the first person in there. And we ran it for about eight years and then we sold it off. Uh, then I did a second stint at a, a startup where I was one of the founding partners. And we ran that for about two years. Yeah. In fact, that is what I was doing just prior to joining Lending Car. Uh, and obviously, then I've also had a consulting background where I've worked with BTV. Um, when I looked at Lending Card as an opportunity, what I realized was very few organizations in the country put their food where the mouth is. So mm -hmm. Lending Card was one of the only firms in the country which was talking about database decisioning, getting enabled right from the time of an underwriting. So a lot of the organizations look at uh, you know data and analytics impacting a lot, especially on the modeling side of it. Mm -hmm. on the revenue and cross sell and marketing because yeah. the risk is very limited there lending card was one of the only organizations where the entire customer set which comes within the journey is actually underwritten using a uh, using a python based algorithm so ml was at the heart of lending card and that was the first pull that i felt towards mm -hmm. lending card i joined in and uh, i think as soon as i joined pandemic hit us Mm -hmm. And uh, we suddenly were faced with a with an uncertain scenario. There were multiple portfolio quality pieces we needed to work on. Profitability went for a toss. The customers were stressed out, and therefore we had to come up with with a very uh, with a sustainable framework on how do we grow this back into a business we can all be proud of. Right. Right. Therefore, what started happening was I started getting involved in a lot of the business calls because uh, everything in lending card is data driven. I mean, as a CEO, I was occupying front and center in any discussion. There would literally be no discussion which I would not be a part of. Uh, over a period of time, you know, Harsh, I found her, kind of came to me and said uh, that you are anyway, uh, you know, quite involved in the whole process. And the fact is that, you know, as a fintech, uh, we will always be data led. Yeah. So therefore, uh, why don't you give, uh, you know, uh, handling the business a shot? You have already run startups. You already know how to use data to create value for organizations uh, and you are a decent sales guy so why don't you go to start see where it ends and you know we'll be very supportive and i think uh, that was the second pull which i felt you know uh, at at a cxo level it it does not happen often that you are given a completely different remit from where you've been Absolutely. especially if you haven't done that all your life right uh, the, i mean some of my friends actually come back to me and say you know uh, after 40, you should only do what you have done all your life. Correct. And here I was thinking that entirely and uh, saying, you know, I'm going to actually do something which I've never done. Uh, while I had run businesses, it was not a part of a fintech or an NBFC, right? So it was about, uh, you know, unlearning a lot of things, learning a lot of new things. It's been an interesting journey. I think uh, we have done well enough uh, since I've taken over. Uh, we are now a profitable entity. We are growing month on month. Uh, 
I think the numbers are very are sparkling quickly. So uh, you know, hopefully, we are now building a business which we'll all be proud of. Yeah, I think we're all very very proud of it. And kudos to you. It's been very interesting hearing about your journey. I think you're doing fantastic. Thank you. Sure. Others would also agree. So, what do you think today is the biggest trend of blending art? Like, so. I think as I think about Lightning Card as a brand, as a concern that we have built, uh, multiple strengths come to my mind. You know, uh, I spoke about algorithmic uh, underwriting. That is a key strength. I think our entire co-lending focus, where we are the largest MSME co-lenders in the country today, uh, that's a large strength. Uh, I think our ability to run our business through account aggregator. We were early adopters to it. We are the largest adopters of it. Those are key strengths that we have built over a period of time. But if you ask me, what is the singular strength that we possess as a, as a, as a company? I think it's about being able to envision the future and execute it flawlessly. So everything that I've been talking about, whether it be algorithmic underwriting, account aggregator, co-lending, these were all future when we actually started doing it. Right. Today, it all seems in hindsight to be, you know, the way to run a business, but we actually started these journeys a lot before most other uh, firms. And I think therefore, and, and we have done very well, right? We have, we have actually deployed them well in our organization and we are reaping the benefits now. So to my mind, the vision and the ability to execute it is extremely high. And to my mind, that's the singular strength we possess. Oh, that's interesting. We know that we are downward more than 50% of the total applications of account aggregators, the total bank statements. Well, absolutely. In fact, I was talking to, uh, you know, one of the rating agencies yesterday. Mm -hmm. And these were the two strengths that I talked about. Right. I realized we have actually disbursed more than 800 crores through the account aggregator network. Oh, wow. That is a number that most people have not heard. Of. Actually. That's, that's brilliant. So... You've been in this industry and you've been here for so, so long, right? I mean, your journey has been amazing. So if if I were to ask you that, what is that one lesson, right, that your job has taught you that that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? It can be lending card, it can be, you know, earlier, whatever. But what's that one thing that you feel that, you know, this people should know? And, I, and you're here to tell them. Well, my thinking in that is very similar to what Harsh says. Harsh says, Apne pitaji ki company samjho. Uh, I believe personally that the buck has to stop at me. Uh, I think if all of us take on responsibility for every single piece of work that passes through our desk, right. and we make sure that it does not matter who was at the beginning of it and who is at the end of it, but when it passes my desk, it will be the best piece of work that this company will deliver. I think if we can all do that, it will create a culture and a firm which will be the envy of the ownership mindset. Is this what absolutely, you? absolutely? By the way, thanks for reminding me that it has been so so long in this uh, in this entire industry, and that I'm getting really old. <laughs> no, not at all. just experienced. <laughs> Let's be polite about it. <laughs> Okay, I have a fun one for you there. Um, and you know, so many times you've tried to reschedule the podcast because you've been busy preparing for your board meetings. So, is right. there any concern do you have for the next yeah. board meeting? Well, I think board meetings are fun, to be honest. <laughs> uh, are they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, I think the board is essentially just a guiding place, right? Mm -hmm. What they are trying to do is they are trying to make sure that all the collective wisdom and the experience, as you rightly put it, the experience that comes with them is helping us tread the right path. And if there is uh, help that is required from a lending card perspective, uh, the board is available. We have an extremely supportive and an extremely rich board. Brings a different flavor to the table. Hmm. And what that allows us to do is we are able to literally sound off anything that is going on in our minds and what we want to do with the business with the board and get very, very clear feedback in terms of whether this would work, not work, whether it is worth taking the uh, chance on. What that then uh, creates is, uh, you know, you need to be very sure that when you are taking it to the board, 
Mm. You're extremely well prepared and you've thought through what you're taking. And I think that is why I'm saying it's a lot of fun because it, it <laughs> challenges you. Yeah. It's not something that, you know, you can just lift and shift, apply a cookie cutter and just take to somebody, right? Right. Uh, the first question that you have to ask yourself is, is it ready for their need? Hmm. And I think uh, that puts on a lot of responsibility. And it, uh, then you obviously work on the output. And when you finally take it to anybody, and you know the board is just one body out of it, right? right. Uh, whenever you take it to anybody, you have given it your best shot. You have thought yeah. through it. Uh, and that reflects in the respect that you get at the, uh, at the end of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So to my mind, board meetings are fun. I think. Uh, we haven't had a stressful board meeting in a very long time, primarily because all the numbers are looking good, profitability is happening. So the board is also, also a little more chilled out with us. <laughs> Knock on the wood on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So we know that you're a very, very busy man, right? And like you mentioned, you're part of everything that's going on in the organization. So how do you basically keep up with the trends or the changing trends? Or what do you predict are going to be the changing trends? And how do you really keep up to date with you know, all these information around you. So I do some cheats. Cheat. Uh, <laughs> so one, I, uh, I've always, I've, I've realized very early in my life that I am, uh, I'm very slow to grasp, uh, you know, management concepts through a book. Okay. Uh, what I always prefer is uh, if somebody says it out to me. So therefore, to my mind, the first cheat that I apply is I speak to a lot of them. Hmm. A lot of my friends are in the same industry. Uh, a lot of the mentors that I've looked up to over the years, uh, they speak a lot. Right. So I keep having chats with them uh, to get a more practical view on what's happening and how the industry is going. The other thing, which is a more recent development is, uh, you know, instead of listening to FM, I've started listening to podcasts uh, uh, as I drive my way to work and on the way back. It's a slightly newer one, so I'm still figuring it out. Uh, <laughs> Do you have any favorites? I read a lot. I am a voracious reader. Uh, theoretical concepts are not something that I spend a lot of time on. Hmm. A lot of people do get a lot of quality inputs using some of the management books. Uh, to me, generic reading and reading about disparate industries right. is what gives me my point of view. For example, you know, I was reading about uh, ONDC the other day. Hmm. And then I am now already thinking about how does it have an application here? How do I use it in my environment? And yeah. so, on. so I try to understand different concepts that are happening and try to see if it's coming through, uh, it can come through together in the industry that we are part of. Interesting. Do you listen to podcasts? You can actually also tell us if there are any favorite podcasts, whether you know, they're work related or casual. As I said, I'm new to it, so don't ask me. This <laughs> you listen to Lending Card Leadership Podcast? <laughs> I, I do, I do. <laughs> okay. Um, and you also mentioned you're a voracious reader. Any books that you know you'd like to recommend to our uh, listeners that this is a must read or uh, professionally or personal? I mean, both ways works. Because the reading for me is a little bit of a guilty secret. Mm -hmm. I am completely drawn to mindless thrillers. So, you know, if I start telling people about books, I will start talking about Jack Reacher books and Mitch Rapp books. And I don't think most people would want to hear <laughs> about it. Uh, so for me, you know, uh, reading is also a stress busting activity. I mean, it's it's a very hectic life that all of us follow. Yeah. I am also into active activities. So my stress buster really is reading something which uh, which helps pump up the adrenaline a little bit. And uh, gives me a little bit of a downtime. So I read a lot of casual reading. I, I don't do a lot of reading. Which is which any two, three current books that you're reading or anyone? I read Jack Reacher's latest. Uh, I am actually trying to download uh, the last series on the Grey Man. Oh. It's called Fort Gentry is the, is the main character there. So I have this fascination with the spies and thrillers and whatnot. So I read a lot on that. Interesting. And I also feel that I don't know because you you're just a great orator and you know you're also a issue leader now you've mentioned. So I feel you'd be a great author, right? So if you do decide to write a book in the near future, what would that be on and what is the title of that book? Huh, that's an interesting one. So um 
you know, being a parent, you very quickly realize that you're getting old. <laughs> so I think uh, the latest one I would write would be, would have one of the two titles. I think either it would say things I don't understand <laughs> or it would be, when did I get old? <laughs> because, you know, when I, when I think about myself, I feel I am young. And, uh, you know, then my, then my son starts a WhatsApp group between me and my wife, mm -hmm. which says old people and their child. <laughs> and then he starts talking about manga and he starts talking about, uh, you know, uh, Fortnite and, you know, skins that the characters are wearing. And then he starts doing various dances and I have <laughs> no clue what is happening. So I think, uh, yeah, right now it's, uh, you know, when did I get old kind of book. I'm really waiting to see the book on the shelves very soon. <laughs> I actually am thinking I shouldn't do it. So don't <laughs> describe it. <laughs> no, I think you should do it. I think everybody will read it. I am sure. <laughs> okay. Um, on that note, if I were to ask you that if you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would that be? That's actually a no-brainer, kitchen. So kitchen. I absolutely love uh, tuar dal kitchen, the yellow dal kitchen. Yeah. Uh, and I can have it with ghee, without ghee, with accompaniments like achar, chutney, piyaz, or whatever, or without it. I mean, uh, and that's something that I've actually, you know, had for like seven, eight days in a row, uh, you know, morning and night. Uh, when I was a bachelor, so because, because you were in, you, you were living alone, or you know, I was living alone, alone, but I could have gone out. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, essentially, I am a lethargic person, <laughs> and HD is something that is comfort food for me. So you know, if I am if I am unwell, I would have the patli dal ki khichdi or you know the thin <laughs> khichdi. Yeah. If I am feeling absolutely fine, I will have uh, the yellow dal khichdi. If it's festival time, like, you know, Sankranti or something, it'll be the black dal khichdi. Wow. And when I am just in the mood to order from outside, I can order a chana dal khichdi. So. Khichdi is, is your thing, right? Can you can you also cook these different types of khichdi? I can. I can. You can? So I can actually cook, the I, I better than khichdi, I can cook Thai food. Oh, that's total opposite. Yeah, so what happened was, you know, my, my wife and I we used to stay in Thailand for a bit, right? And yeah. uh, uh, we used to enjoy that cuisine quite a bit. Yeah. And then we came back and then later on pandemic happened. And I remember, uh, you know, May 2020, it was my wife's birthday that was coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, we couldn't have gone out. Right. So that was the time I kind of, uh, one of my friends used to make, uh, uh, used to make uh, green Thai curry chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took the recipe from him. Uh, I somehow managed to get the ingredients from the neighborhood shops. I actually ordered some, some I got, so on and so forth. And uh, then for the first time in my life, I made a, a, a yellow Thai curry chicken. Mm, and it came out phenomenally well. So as with any early victories, you know, then I made it for the next three weekends. <laughs> and then my wife said, can you please stop it? Can you come back to Kichiri? <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, but from there, I think my love for Thai food kind of blossomed into the kitchen. Till then, I was used to ordering it, right. uh, but now I make it quite a bit. Ah, that's very interesting. Uh, and will you, if you get Kichiri to work, will you uh, eat that too, you know, just by yourself, put it in the balcony in office? That's, that's what we've heard. You don't prefer eating with a lot of people. Why is that? I don't think it's about uh, not <laughs> preferring to eat with people. Okay. As you know, I meet a lot of people, so you know I don't have okay. uh, concerns there. I think what happens is uh, I like to read or watch something when I'm eating, because that's usually some of the downtime that I'm getting. And it is very rude if you sit on a table with people and you keep reading something, right? <laughs> so I am just polite. I am not. Uh, I'm not trying to you know walk away from people. I'm just trying to be polite. Okay, everybody, please note. <laughs> yeah, please. Okay. Uh, and here's a conjecture that's my favorite word. Uh, you're planning to buy a huge villa with swimming pool in Ahmedabad. Please, would you please clarify? So this is obviously contextual and therefore uh, <laughs> let me answer it in a different way. Sure. Yes, I do spend a lot of time in Ahmedabad because of the work, uh, yes. because work takes me there. Yes. 
just to be clear, my family thinks I already own this villa <laughs> or this house, but they have added one more piece to it. Oh, they also feel I have a second family which I have in Amdavad. <laughs> so please don't fan these rumors. Uh, you know, I'm a much married uh, person having only one house which is in Bangalore. <laughs> when I go to Amdavad, I will continue to stay in the hotel room which is provided by the firm. <laughs> and I have no plans of picking up either a house or a family. A family. <laughs> sure, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Thank guys. you for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> anyway, uh, and here's my last question, and uh, this is a very should be very interesting for you. So, what's one question that you wish I'd asked you, and how would you have answered? That you wish you would have asked me. Yeah. You should have asked me, um, what is it that nobody knows about me, which I would not want anybody else to know about? Okay, I ask. would not have answered. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> there are only a very, very few people who, who know some of the things that I have done in my life, which are, uh, you know, politically incorrect. And therefore, I will not want to have them in this podcast at least. Come on, you can go on record at least one of them. No. The least. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. <laughs> okay, that's all I have for you, Abhishek. And um, I know you're a very, very busy person. And thank you so much for taking our time for this. It really means a lot to us and our listeners. Thank you so much, Kenny. Great conversation, lots of fun. Uh, we look forward to another one later. Thank you. And to our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit like and share. Milte hain agli baar with some real insights on leadership and the industry. Only on Lessons with the Leaders.